Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Star Wars movie realization on Mitsu Shadow Trooper from Bandai and Tamashi Nations. The movie realization line has been pretty spectacular. If you have not seen these before, these are basically just some very cool original concepts depicting the Star Wars characters wearing some awesome samurai armor. Now this is pretty cool because the design for the characters, specifically Darth Vader in the Empire in the Star Wars movies, was definitely inspired by the Japanese kind of samurai armor. So seeing that kind of placed over all of the different troopers in the Star Wars universe has been pretty cool. So let's jump in and take a look at this Shadow Trooper. So the Shadow Trooper comes in a fully enclosed box with a nice clamshell on the inside that perfectly houses the figure and all of his accessories. And when you open that up, this right here is what we get. So let's start with the scale on this thing, bringing in the tape measure here. You can see that the figure stands just about right at seven inches tall. Um, so they are a bit on the larger size. You can kind of see that with my hands here. And one of the things about these uh, figures from Tamashi Nations is that they are always beautifully sculpted. The details and everything that they work on, work in on these figures are absolutely mind blowing. So here you can see we've got our Shadow Stormtrooper, which of course are these stormtroopers that wear the all black armor, uh, done as if he were a samurai. So if we come in here real close on the helmet, you can take a look at the sculpting, and you can see that the stormtrooper style helmet is still in place, but everything all around it really adds the elements of a cool samurai helmet. Very, very cool effect there, and it works really well. You'll also notice that all the armor bits have a nice gloss to them. Them, while the clothing pieces underneath are painted in a flat black so it really stands out and that works out great for a figure like this where he's all black because that way he's not just blending into himself all of those glossy armor bits really do stand out amongst the rest of the figure also it is worth noting that there is a lot of spots here who are that are definitely highlighted by sort of a dark gray color so that really does help to offset the black quite a bit and we even have some dark blue seen on kind of the uh, katana sword there as well as the little belt wrapped around his waist but all in all it's just a beautiful sculpt from head to toe and a really great looking figure so let's go ahead and talk about the articulation on these guys now one of the things i'm always blown away about with these is the high quality because the figures feel so solid and so sturdy but they feature some really wonderful articulation as well so you can see we have a nice ball joint at the head where it's jointed at the base of the neck as well as the top of the neck. So you should be able to get a good range of motion there. The shoulders are ball jointed and you'll see that we can even swivel those little shoulder pieces there, the armor pieces, so they do not get in the way of that articulation at all. And it's even kind of articulated again inside the shoulder there, kind of inside the torso. So look at that, good range of motion there, which is really, really nice. You do have the double bends at the elbow, so you can really get a nice range of motion there by bending the arm. And then we can also swivel those wrists as well as move the wrists up and down with the little hinge joints there. Uh, we do have a nice ball joint at the waist, and you can see I actually just popped that torso right off the ball joint. It is solid, so don't worry about it being too loose, but it can roll all the way around there. It will pop off if you just bend it too far, which is what I'm doing there, but still good range of motion there. You got those nice ball joints at the thighs as well. Uh, it's going to get hindered a little bit by the armor and the sculpt of the pants, but still good range of motion there. You can swivel that as well. You got those nice double joints at the knees, just like with the elbows. So again, you can really get a good range by bending the knee there. You can also swivel at the ankles as well as uh, flex the ankles up and down because of the nice ball joints with the hinges there. So you should be able to get some pretty cool poses out of this guy. And to add to all of the posability with this figure, he does come with several interchangeable hands as well as several accessories. So the hands here are just on a ball joint. And you notice right out of the box, I've just got them with the closed fists. So if I wanted to swap those out, you're just gonna give it a nice little tug on the hand and it pops right off the little ball joint there. 
and then we can easily replace that with any of the other hands. So among these hands, we've got kind of the more uh, open trigger finger gripping hand. We've got two different sizes of gripping hand where you got like kind of the wider grip and the smaller grip, which are for some of his accessories. And then we've also got a more open hand there as well. So just so you can see how we mix and match some of these pieces, uh, let me go ahead and pop on this joint here, right there, get that hand in place. And it's just as easy as just kind of giving it a nice press right there on the ball joint and it locks in place. So you might have noticed already that at his side, he does have a sheathed katana. So we can actually pull that right out of the little loop there on his belt and you can pull the sword right out of that little sheath. And if we've got the more open gripping hand, he gets a really nice tight grip on that blade so we can pose him with the sword. So interchanging those hands is key for coming up with some of the different ways you can display the figure. For instance, he's got these smaller little dagger type weapons, and these are great for that smaller gripping hand. And then my favorite accessory is this old timey looking gun for his blaster. And he's got a trigger finger for both hands so you can get him easily holding that with a perfect grip on the trigger. And then that open hand works out great for gripping the front barrel of the blaster. It's a really cool accessory and you can find some fantastic poses with him standing there with that and just looking seriously cool. So there you go, my friends. There is a look at the Star Wars movie realization on Mitsu Shadow Trooper figure from Bandai and Tamashi Nations. I've been a big fan of the movie realization line. I think the designs and the sculpts of these guys are really well done and very intriguing. They just make for very interesting looking action figures to add to your collection shelf. And the quality is top notch on these guys with great posability. They feel very sturdy and all of those mix and match parts make it so that you can display this guy in a number of great ways. Definitely worth checking out if you're into the higher end collectibles and you want something new and original for your Star Wars shelf. So very special thanks to the folks over at Bluefin for sending this guy along so we can get a good look at him outside of the packaging. Happy Star Wars Day, my friends. May the 4th be with you. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button, leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and don't forget to subscribe for more reviews just like this one. Until next time.